am live. This is attempt number four at Writers Uncut. We are unedited, unfiltered, and having some technical difficulties today. I am dressed up as Anne of Green Gables, and I am having um, my writer best friend and my agent join us. Here we go. We will try this again. I think they're coming. Hi, guys. Thank you for, for swapping or jumping over here to be a part of this live ask the agent hello i swear you guys what is going on like this is our seventh episode and we have not had problems like this i think it's you me. need to use some of your witchcraft your your wizard i know <laughs> reparo <laughs> i can't i can't think of any good spells right now but okay so fourth time's the charm i'm really sorry guys thank you for joining back again and I'm, I want to introduce ourselves again, because if we finally finish this, then we can put it on YouTube. Yes. So um, I'm Cheyenne Young. I'm the author of The Last Wish of Sasha Cade. And I'm here with Anne Rose, who is an agent and an author of Road to Eugenica. And we are hanging out with Deirdre. Who's who just have a book on Anne. <laughs> I'm just as Anne of Green Gables, if you can't tell. Um, I am also... Who couldn't author... tell? <laughs> What's that? I, who couldn't tell that you're Anne of Green Gables? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like... I don't know what I look like. <laughs> the best <laughs> ever. I mean, so... <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to come up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I wrote these two books, and we um, come, come together for a weekly chat to talk all things writing, publishing and promotion and we have our special guest my agent Ann Rose and we have ask the agent questions so if you have any of those we have a few in our queue if you have any leave them in the comments and we'll get to them in a couple minutes so we were talking about what should first time queriers keep in mind and what is the best way for a writer to determine if their submission is ready for the query process um, if you guys want to recap real quick or we can just move on to the next question Sure. I mean, I think a recap would be first time yeah. queriers know that there is a motto in publishing, which is hurry up and wait. So just be patient. Know that it takes time. Know that, uh, that agents, we want to read your submission. We want to read your manuscripts, but sometimes there's just not enough time in the day to get it done. I know that myself speaking, I get almost 100, if not more, queries a week. And then top that off with all of the manuscripts that I've asked for that I need to read. And then of course my client work has to come first. And if you have any clients that are like this amazing girl right here, she's very prolific. And I think about three weeks ago, she's like, I have this outline for an idea. And she's like, two days ago, I finished my third revision. I was like, oh my gosh. So yes, so she keeps me very busy, which is amazing, amazing. So. But that's a good segue. But she comes first. That's a really good segue to the best way for a writer to determine if their submission is ready for the query process because this girl doesn't always get that right. So you, you can answer that now again. <laughs> you get very close. You're an amazing writer. So don't, don't put yourself down at all. I think that the way to know if your book is ready for the query process is just that other people have read it. You've had other eyes on it other eyes of people who are not only just readers, but also writers, because they're going to be much more critical of your work. And really, they have to be. If, if you're in a good critique group, they will be critical. They won't just be high-fiving you the whole time, because we see, like I said, I see almost 100 submissions a week, if not more, sometimes less, but right around there. So it really has to stand out. And so you want someone who's going to be a little bit tougher on you, because you want the best work and you want to put your best work out there. Yeah. Don't send out the first draft of your no. manuscript. Please don't. And with given that NaNoWriMo starts tomorrow, do not query that book in December, guys. No. You need to revise it and edit it. And, and I think a huge tip is to get a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion. Don't just trust yourself because you are the writer and you're blind to any flaws the manuscript may have. Unless you're like me, I read over my stuff. I read over my published books, and I'm like, this is crap. Why did I read this? <laughs> but, yes. So just, you know, um, 
you're ready to submit when you have done your research, when you've read a ton of author blogs and agent blogs and Twitter feeds, and you've watched videos like this that give you advice, and you've just revised and, and done everything you can possibly do to make your manuscript as good as it gets because you don't want to waste that manuscript. If it's not good enough and your query sucks and you send it out 500 times and get 500 rejections, you've just wasted that. You know, you're going to have to shelf it and start over again with a new book. So take your time and it's really worth it. Like Anne said, publishing is hurry up and wait because I know you're really eager to get an agent now, but that's literally the easiest, quickest part, I feel like. Because then after that, everything's going to take so much longer. My book, Sasha, we, I wrote it in uh, July, June of 2016. We got our book deal in April of 2017, and it wasn't published till October of 2018. So it's going to take a while. So make sure your book is the best that it can be. Um, traditional publishing, I would say, is definitely a long game. It's it's the tortoise race, not the hare. And so patience is probably one of my biggest lessons um, in, in this whole thing. And so patience in the writing process, patience in the revising process, and then patience when you move on and you do get an agent and, you know, move into the publishing space. Okay, so next question. Uh, how many rejections before a writer should switch to querying a new manuscript from Margaret Adele? Wow. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's break this down. I don't think that you should start off by querying 100 agents, right? So you're going to do, hopefully, the way you query is in small batches. I think that's your most strategic way. So you query in small batches and you kind of see what the response is. If you are querying something and you're getting zero requests, like none, then either something not working with your query or there's something that's not working in those first pages. So it really just depends on if uh, most of the times with submissions, you do send some first pages. So if you are sending a query and first pages, there's something not working there if you're not getting any asks. So that's a good place to start. So you send some out, you're getting no, no asks, no asks, no asks. You go ahead and you redo it and then you're getting asks. Awesome. At that point, if you're getting rejections, then it's usually something more towards the middle that isn't working. So either the pace of the book dies or the voice just doesn't kind of carry through or those kinds of things. So if you're getting asks and then you're getting rejections and there's something wrong with the manuscript. So I think your best course of action is to query in small batches, kind of wait to get feedback, which I know it's the hardest thing. Waiting is the toughest part of this industry wait to get some feedback and then kind of move forward from there. But I wouldn't really necessarily say to ditch the project until you're like hundreds of queries and hundreds of rejections in because there are so many agents and this industry is so subjective. So even something that doesn't work for me might be exactly what someone else is looking for or what doesn't work for them might be exactly what I'm looking for. So just keep working, keep trying, keep moving forward. Just thought of something I can't say out loud. <laughs> about a private submission she told me about once. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's about horses. Oh, so, yeah, no, don't say that one. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry to break character there. I'm not being a very good Hogwarts student. <laughs> um, that's who I am. I'm not Harry Potter, by the way. I'm just a Hogwarts student. Um, I didn't want to draw a scar on my face because I might go out to lunch later. So, anyway. Um, okay, so how many rejections should a writer, okay, I just want to throw out that my magic number was 50, and I, I did a 50, 50 rejections before I moved on to the next manuscript, which don't follow, don't follow what I did, that was just me and my brain, because I am such a fast writer, I had so many other books I wanted to query, so what, if you're only querying one book, you should always be working on your next book, like, at, at the same time, that way maybe, you know, if you get too many rejections on that first one, you have another one ready to go. Um, but when it came to Sasha, because I had queried so many different books and I had spent so many years, we're talking like six or seven years reading query blogs, agent blogs, learning about it, yeah. joining online forums and posting my queries and getting feedback on how to make, make it better. So after I had developed those skills, when I queried Sasha, I sent out 20 queries in the first week and I got 18 requests and three offers of representation. So, and those, the two that didn't request it, they just never replied. So, you know, I feel like that was a query that worked and it worked because I had worked so hard studying and researching how to write it. So, and maybe I'll share that on our Facebook group. I can we share the query. share that one. So. Yeah. 
Um, I'll just add too, sometimes, you know, what, what, one of the things I've learned through the querying process is it's not, it's not personal. So we're not, like there's a lot of talk of branding nowadays and especially in like the social media sphere. Um, it's not about you, it's about your work. And so sometimes, you know, like as great of a person as you may be, like you can't take those rejections personally. It's the agent is not interested in that particular piece of material at the moment. And so that's just one thing I always like to encourage people to keep in mind. Um, you know, it's not a character judgment or anything like that. You know, you're like, but I, but I, you know, but I wrote this book and it's so great. And, and me, 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 it's, it's about the book, not about you. And then the other thing is sometimes the, you know, the agents have their finger on the pulse of what editors are looking for, what's hot in the market, what's coming up. And maybe it's just not the right time for that particular manuscript. Um, so, you know, beyond like the basics of making sure you have your, your story arc, your character arc, all your pacing and everything's like really tight and good. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of that particular story is not meant to be told right now, but don't ever give up on it completely. Like, you know, keep, keep it around. Don't, delete it. <laughs> um, but that, you know, that's just another thing that comes to mind too. Yeah. Because apparently vampires are back in style. So, you know, if your book is not trendy at the moment or anymore, just save it. You never know when it'll be cool again. So, you know, um, but always be working on that next new book. Yeah. And okay. So our next question, this is the last one we actually have already. So if you have a question, please type it in the comment box so we can answer it live. Uh, but our last question is from the writing chopper, which is such a cool name. It makes me think of like a helicopter that writes. I don't know. So the question is, should I try a new genre for Nano? All in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> so Nano, in case you don't know, you probably do. It stands for uh, National Novel Writing Month, which is the month of November, which starts tomorrow. And you can go to nanorimo.org and sign up. And the goal is to try to write a 50,000 word manuscript in one month. And it's supposed to be this fun, quick drafting kind of fun thing. You're not supposed to take it seriously or anything. Um, I did it for several, several years and I loved it. And I have a NaNoWriMo hoodie that I would have worn if I wasn't dressed up as a, as a generic Hogwarts student. But um, I'm not doing it this year because it doesn't fit in with my schedule. But I, I credit NaNoWriMo to teaching me how to write super fast. Mm -hmm. And now I write all of my books in under 30 days. That's just, I mean, think Deirdre and I are very similar that way. We like to draft really quickly. So um, with the question, should I try a new genre for NaNo? I say, why not? Like NaNo is supposed to be fun. You might as well. Like this is your time to kind of go all out and just write whatever your heart wants to write. So absolutely. I second that. I, I third that. And the other great thing about NaNo is it's a, it's a wonderful community. Like everyone encourages each other like to, to do writing sprints and to hit their word count goals and all that stuff. So it's, it is, it is fun. It's like, like for the, for the nerdy writers in us, it's like, we're all, oh, we get to be with our people. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I am not a nerd. I'm super cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so cool. You don't even know. <laughs> also, I think, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's common knowledge, but maybe it's not that Marissa Myers wrote Cinder. That was her NaNoWriMo project. And so obviously she ended up editing and, and doing all the right things. And, but that was her NaNo project. Also, um, uh, Stephanie Perkins, Anna and the French Kiss started out as a NaNo novel as well. Wow. So you never know. Never know. Love it. Those are both um, books. Also, if you're interested in Instagram, which you are because you're watching this, um, I have, if you go to my profile, I have created a NaNoWriMo challenge for next month. Ooh. So it's hashtag IG writers NaNo, I believe. And I have a new prompt for every day in the month of November. So you can take a picture or post some kind of picture related to your NaNoing progress. So I am going to be cheering everyone on, even though I'm not participating in NaNo this year. So check that out. Do we have any questions? Nobody has asked us any questions. How sad. Any live <laughs> questions? We have Agent Anne here. Come on, come on. Um, Query in my box. Do you want me to tell you about it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> should we read queries live? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to give us three things you wish every um, query querier kn knew knows would know? Okay. Sure. Okay. So I think that 
First is always at least Google how to write a query letter. But I think for the simple fact that you're watching this and you're writing here, then you're probably already a step ahead of the gang. I think that a query letter breaks down into like very simple, very simple things, right? There's four main parts of a query letter or four main pieces of, of the body of a query letter aside from that, you know, dear agent name, don't use agent name, actually use their name and make sure it's the right name. I've been called lots of wrong names and you know, your little bio, but who is your main character? What do they want? What are their goals? What stands in their way? What are the obstacles? And what happens if they fail? What are the stakes? Those are the things that your query letter should tell me. Uh, I could say that when a query letter has all of those things, I already know that you're a step ahead of the game. She tweeted the, that, that same thing and I copy pasted it and it's somewhere over there. I wrote it on a note on a little notepad and I look at it every time I'm outlining a new novel. So that's some really good advice. That is. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's absolutely. I mean, your novel has to have all of those things. If there's no conflict. There's no story. Yeah. You've, you've, you've taught me that tenfold. Like I knew that conceptually, but it's like, oh yeah. Okay. That you really need to hit those points and hit them hard in your novel. And then that needs to translate into a very small paragraph in your query. Absolutely. So easy peasy, basically. I mean, yeah, so easy. Yeah. No sweat. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Writers. We're here to cheer you on. Um, and I'll just say again, we have a private Facebook group for writers uncut that you can join where we talk about all these things, um, you know, from the, the technical sides of writing and publishing and promoting to fun things like what we're reading. So we encourage you to join us. Um, if you want, if you have any questions or you want to like go a little bit deeper in some of the things we're talking about right now. Um, yeah. So anything else? I was else? trying to tweet. It's not working. Um, you people are being super quiet today. Yeah. We'll just call someone out. Call they're, someone out. They're all, Let's call they're out all Jennifer. Halloween crap. I'm calling out Jennifer. She's a swoon romance author with me, so we're imprint sisters, and you have to ask a question now. Ooh. <laughs> I hope she's not like me. Sometimes I'm watching a live, and I leave my phone, and I walk away from it for a while. If you're here, ask, ask us a question. Yeah. We have, we have an agent. We have three published authors. You can ask us anything. And two dogs in the vicinity. Yes. Chewy's, Chewy's on the floor. Is Nova wearing a Halloween costume? <laughs> Oh, she is. She is. Allow me to show you real quick. Yeah, okay. there she is. She's right here. Can you see her? It's Supernova. <laughs> She's back, girl, Nova. She's back, girl. Okay, so I'll talk about a couple things that maybe you shouldn't do. Oh, okay. agent pet peeves. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Uh, I mean, in regards to what? A lot of. <laughs> I think. I think a good pet peeve is that. For example, like I have DMs open on Twitter. I know a lot of author agents have their DMs open. It's when people ask for advice via DM that, you know, that we're not, we don't have any relations with. Like if my clients have questions, of course, I'm always all about answering them. But if I don't even know you, like we've never been friends before, then it kind of makes it difficult for me to offer any advice per se, about a novel or marketing or, or those kinds of things. So I think uh, a pet peeve would be understanding boundaries of agents and understanding that even if you do see us on Twitter or you see us online, that we do get to have some time and personal time to ourselves. I can speak for myself that I work probably just agenting alone 10 to 12 hours a day. So when I'm on Twitter, that's usually like my I can't look at my screen anymore. Like I need a break. And you know, sometimes I'll be out there throughout the day. Sometimes I won't be there at all. Uh, it just kind of just depends on the day, but just understanding boundaries, knowing that we are people too, and that we deserve to have vacations and, you know, weekends off sometimes. And, and just understanding that I think would be a big one. And I think, I think things like this, like lives or sometimes Twitter um, agents open up their, their Twitter to questions, um, you know, at, um, events like conferences, like they're on a panel. That's a, that's an opportunity if they do a Q and A to ask questions like this. But Google's your friend, so if you have a question that an agent can answer, chances are Google can provide some kind of answer for you too. So respecting those boundaries, I think, and just you know having the sense not to like kind of intrude is, I think, that's really important. Yeah. So thank you. I saw another one come in, but I. 
don't know if we can scroll. Thank you, fanbook she art said, question. Okay. And uh, not a question, but I'm reading Sasha and I love it. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Yeah, it's really cute. Hi, Tamar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jen asked the question. Yay. Yay, thanks, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Deirdre wants to answer this question. Because <laughs> clients on editing manuscripts before submitting to publishers. How long does this take? <laughs> um, well, all agents are different. Some are very hands-on, which I'm very, very thankful for. Um, Anne is very hands-on. She is fantastic. I think as a writer herself, an author, it gives her the, um, the, like the, the depth of insight to really see how a story should work and you know, where it's falling short and where its strengths are and kind of knit those together. Um, so yes, yeah, so a lot of agents do work on the editing process and um, I would say definitely make sure your manuscript is as polished as you possibly can. Do like all your rounds of revisions, all your rounds of editing before your agent um, looks at it. Otherwise you might make her have to work 12 hours a day, which is probably not a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes my manuscripts, I think because I write so fast and I, be, I do become blind, you were saying that before, Shan, like you become almost blind to your own writing. Um, sometimes there's some weak spots, um, but it sort of depends on the agent whether or not they will work on the editing process with you. Um, and how long does this, this take? I think it depends, so you can probably answer that better. Sure. So I absolutely am 100% in there diving, digging in, and we, I roll up my sleeves, and we talk about not only major plot issues with the book, but we also, I also like to do a fine edit, too. So I'm talking about commas, and, you know, this line should go with this line. You know, we need a, a, a chapter break here. So I'm very detailed. So not only is it line edits for me, but it's big picture edits. And, the, and how long really also depends on the writer. Like, I have writers like this amazing writer here and she's quick and she can get things done and she's not afraid when I tell her maybe we need to just open a brand new document and just kind of allow ourselves the freedom to change some things a little bit more so um you see the sneaky way she words that yeah it's not open good. a new document yeah just open a new one break down the walls break down the barriers <laughs> no longer are confined by what's on the page and allow yourself the opportunity to explore some other ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So we do that. And I also, I mean, I have a client that I, I adore her, her. I love her story. And we're literally taking it one chapter at a time because doing an overall edit was just way too much for her. And she felt like it was, it was almost anxiety ridden, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want that to be the case for anyone. So Every, you know, every couple days, she sends me a new chapter, we break down that chapter, we work on it, and then we kind of move on. So it just kind of depends on the client. Um, I'll add one more thing to that part of the conversation, too. I think we've talked about this a little bit, Cheyenne, on another um, Writers Uncut, but when, when you do have an agent and you're in that process of editing and revising and working on, you know, the, from the, the big picture stuff to the, to the smaller um, minutia, <laughs> the details of the commas, um, don't, again, don't take it personally. Your agent is only there to make your work better. Like they want it to jump and shine off the page. And sometimes, it, you know, you have that initial, you get the letter, you get the notes and you're like, oh my gosh, it, it can be anxiety producing for sure. Um, you know, take one day or a few hours or whatever you need and then come back to it, you know, with, with fresh eyes and fresh perspective and, and the, the mindset that like, you're, you're just doing this to make the story better because then also when you work with your editor, you're going to be going through that again. So you have to, you have to have tough skin, thick skin, and know that it's, it's about the story. And again, not about you. Um, and a good agent will really be super honest and kind and work hard with you to make the story better. And sometimes that doesn't feel great, but it is ultimately um, the best thing for the book. I think it's also important to say that it should be an open communication. Like I make it very clear with all of my clients before we sign that, I have a very open communication style. And if there's ever a time where they feel that they can't come to me and ask me a question, then we have a problem because this is a team effort. We need to be on the same page. And if you're ever in a situation where like, well, I don't know if I could ask my agent this, then where does that leave our relationship? Like that's not helping you. That's not benefiting to you. That's not helping me help you. So I think that's super important. Okay. We have another 
question for you. This all the time. time. Yes. So sp agency specific, which is we have a portal basically where you submit all of your manuscripts through and you're supposed to get a confirmation that says, yes, it's been received. And it's happened more times than once that people don't, for whatever reason, get this confirmation. If you've already checked your spam filter and it's not there, um, I, like I've mentioned before, my DMs are open and I don't always check them, but I do try to get them get in there pretty often. And if someone DMs me and says, hey, Anne, you know, I queried you. I never got a receipt. Can you, you know, can you, did you get it? I don't have a problem just kind of going and looking and seeing if it's there. Um, just provide the email address that you input when you query and the title of the book. And I can look up and see if it's there. Um, otherwise try, I, I don't know, you could try submitting again, but we do actually see the submission history. So I would say give it some time. But if it's me specifically that you've queried, um, DM me on Twitter and I can, I can go in and look and see if I've received it. So is it known that people don't get an email confirmation, but you did get the submission? So it happens occasionally. You are supposed to get a confirmation that the email, ha that the submission has been received. It's supposed to be like an auto-generated message, but for somewhat, for whatever reason, sometimes it just doesn't work. So it does happen on occasion. I think it has to do with like maybe email filters or spam filters or something, but most of the time it does work. So Anne is super nice. Feel free to message her all your questions. Um, <laughs> text her at any time of day. That's what I do. I can recite her number out loud for no, you guys. So <laughs> <laughs> She's, my it's... clients do get my, my email and my text, but the, no, no. <laughs> It's great having her as a friend because we were friends before she became an agent. And now that she is an agent, I send her stuff all the time. I'm like, should I bother my agent with this or this or this? And I'm like, I feel so bad, but this is what she gets for being my friend. So it's okay. She's super nice. <laughs> we love Anne. Um, yeah. Well, if, if you guys don't have any more questions, these were good ones. Um, I would just like to ask one more before we close out. All right. Ready? Ready. What is your favorite or what makes you want to be an agent? Like what's your favorite thing? You can kind of answer this however you like. What's your favorite thing about being an agent? Like what drew you to this profession? And um, like, what do you, what do you love about it? What makes you want to like agent every day for 12 hours? Sure. So I know, right. I actually was an intern for a really long time and that was on top of my working 40 hours a week on a different job. So I was an intern and it was great and I loved it and I got to do everything that I'm doing now. Right. So I got to be in the slush pile and I got to read submissions and I got to do, and I got to read manuscripts and I got to do read reports and I got to edit these great manuscripts and find editors for them. And I got to do all of those things, but there was one manuscript in particular. And I talk about this all the time. There was one manuscript in particular that I just adored. I loved it so much. And I went to the agent that I was working for and I said, you need, you need to read this. And she, she never read it. And I, I asked months later, months later, months later, and I just knew that there was something special about this book. It needed a lot of work. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I wrote a seven page editorial letter for this particular manuscript. And I said, it needs a lot of work, but I think that we can do it. I think it's going to be brilliant. And so I'm not even sure whatever happened to it. Cause I followed up a few times and from what I understand, she never read it. And so when I got to be an agent, this is literally two and a half years later, I got to talk to that author who wrote that amazing manuscript. And I said, are you still looking for someone? And so now we get to work together on it. And I'm so excited. So I think that's the best part is just finding these brilliant pieces and just getting to, I'm going to be able to get to share it with the world, hopefully. Like that's my goal because I just think it is so incredible that I just never stopped thinking about it two and a half years later never stopped thinking of this manuscript and I wanted to know and I wanted this I wanted everyone to read this book so hopefully now everyone will. so that's also really nice I mean that's such a like it's not an ending but it's a happy plot point along this author's journey like you know it might take you years and years but you know don't give up on your books don't give up on your manuscripts no don't and it, I reached out to her I said I reached out to her and said I remember your book from two years and I really want to talk to you about it. So she took a chance on me. I'm new, but I think it's great. And I cannot wait for people to read it. It is so incredible. I love that. Me too. I, I know okay, so curious. I have a question for Anne. Oh, 
Uh, before we wrap up here, what is on your manuscript wish list? Ooh. I always get this. Uh, what is on my manuscript wish list? I, I'm actually on manuscript wish list now. So if you look me up on the website, yeah. uh, Jessica was kind enough to get me up there. So thanks, Jessica. Uh, so I'm up there now. What is on my manuscript wish list? I love just vibrant settings, voice. Um, I like diverse perspectives, things that are just are unique and something I haven't read before. I love young adults and middle grade books. Those are kind of like where my heart really is. I love children's books. Maybe one day I'm going to do picture books too, and we'll see about that. But right now I'm not taking any picture book submissions. I do take some, I love romance, so I have a few romance authors that are on my list that I adore, and they're brilliant. Uh, let's see what else. I, I keep saying it that I want a YA version of Clue, but we might be working on that. Hit, hit, maybe? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I really, really want that, and I, if we can pull it off, it's going to be amazing. So, I think that would be great. I don't know, just... I love, oh, I'm afraid of unlikable characters. I love unlikable characters. I like edgy. Don't be afraid to push boundaries. If it's something kids are dealing with now, I want, I want to see those books. So for me, nothing's taboo. Nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, my thank you. <laughs> If you have any questions for Anne, type them in the comment box. Yep. Otherwise, we're probably going to wrap up soon. This has been um, so much fun. And this, so I just have fun. to say, um, so Shane and I have been friends, like I don't even know for how many years we were email friends and friends. I did, I actually, I actually looked it up. Oh, it's been about know? seven years. Wow. And we, we first met like what, seven weeks ago, face to face, not in person, but you know, face to face here on Instagram live. So that was pretty exciting. And now I get to see my agent and meet her face to face here on Instagram live. So Social media is pretty cool. She went, hello, you're quiet. Oh no, I'm, I'm still here. Oh, kind of back. Okay, good. Am I back? Yeah, okay. you're back. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, well, right, well, shall we wrap up? Yes. Okay, so can everyone um, smile? Because when this is over, I want to take a screenshot of the video. So smile for a few seconds. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so, um, whoops. Remember, you can check out our previous episodes on YouTube, Writers Uncut. Just search for Writers Uncut. For some reason, they won't give us an official YouTube URL right now. I don't know why. We have to have, like, 100 followers or something. So just search Writers Uncut. You'll find us. Go to Facebook and search Writers Uncut, and you'll find our private group where we will chat, and I will share my query on there, the query that got me 18 requests and three offers. And I always wonder if it would have been more offers, but I took my agent in like a week because I wanted, she was my dream agent. So I didn't wait to see if anyone else would offer. But anyway, I'll be posting that on our group. And then you can also add more, ask any questions you have and we'll, we will force Anne to get on and answer them. <laughs> and, I'm not dressing up next time though. <laughs> yeah, this is special Halloween edition. So um, anyway, I'm going to plug my book again. Hold your Oh, oh. Well, I actually want people to read the next book. So the next book okay. is called Breakout. And it is available, well, it's not available, but you can add it on Goodreads, which I highly suggest that you do. And for every 20 people that add it on Goodreads, I'm actually giving away a query and five-page critique. And I have to say that I have asked for full manuscript from that little critique that I've done. So uh, thanks, person that had the amazing one that they let me read. So, so awesome. think about it. So do that. It's called Breakout by U-R-A-M -A -A Rose. A-M Rose. Oh, it's an author. And you can find and I just want you to read Sasha. Yeah, you should read Sasha. It came out a month awesome. ago, guys, so still read it and tell everyone about it. It's amazing. It's one of those books that, like, I've read it twice now, and I just love it. Hi, Jen. Hi, Hi Jen. Jen. You joined right when we were about to end. Do you have a question in real quick? She, she was the first question. Her oh. question was, um, what should first-time queriers keep in mind? The answer was, just submit your rough draft. Nobody yeah. It doesn't, yeah. No. <laughs> Did you, <laughs> I wrote the America's Next Bestseller. 
Dear Sir or Madam, I have written the best book ever made, and it is going to it is going to sell more copies than Harry Potter, the Bible, and William Shakespeare combined. Combined, yes, absolutely. People do that. People do that. So, I think that you should represent this book, and here's my five page marketing plan. <laughs> But I'm never actually going to tell you about the book. Yeah. Just, they'll just say how, you know, how they have five kids and they live on a ranch and <laughs> they were a teacher. And they just they finished writing this manuscript. They literally just wrote the end and they sent it. Yeah. Don't do that. Should we maybe, should we maybe give her real advice? <laughs> Everything we just said, do the opposite. The opposite. Um, how, oh, how about... Are comps good or bad in your query? Does it matter? So I, this is obviously personal preference. So I don't think they matter. I, if you can't find a good comp for your story, then, then leave it out. And if they're not within the past five years, uh, I wouldn't suggest using them. I don't suggest using comps that are the best sellers because nobody knows what the miracle thing is to make a bestseller. So, Close your money. So, um, so to say that you're the next Harry Potter, you're the next Twilight, those are, those are pretty hard things to actually quantify. So I would suggest not doing those. I have to say that there have been a few times when someone has said a book in their comp that I love and I'll be like, okay, so I kind of do take extra interest, but it can also work in the reverse way because there's some books that I don't particularly love. And if they comp that, I'm like, mm, but me being me, I'll still look at the pages no matter what. So if you're not confident with the comps that you've chosen, I would say just leave them out. They're not, they're not 100% necessary. So for my book, The Last Wish of Sasha, Sasha Cade, uh, in my query, I comped 13 Reasons Why and P.S. I Love You. And I think those were like the greatest comps I had ever thought of but all the other books I've ever queried I have never had any comp books because I couldn't find any that really that I felt like really fit so definitely only use a book if it actually fits I would say more thir not 13 reasons but um Fault in Our Stars meets which is funny you say that because I think it was school library journal someone um some trade review said if you like the Fault in Our Stars you'll like this book yeah, I would but, definitely comp that. Yeah, I chose more. 13 Reasons Why because she leaves a bunch of, you know, letters after her death. And then P.S. I Love You, obviously, for same the same reason. So um, I was, like, super proud with those comps. But then whenever we've gone on submission with other books and my agent and I are trying to come up with comp books, we, we it's like, we've got nothing. Like, there's nothing. I, I don't know. And my agent said the same thing. Like, if it's too popular of a book, don't use it. And which actually, I was doing this, I was querying this before the 13 Reasons Why Netflix show came out. So I probably wouldn't use it now because now it's I see it a lot. so popular. I see it a but, lot. But um, also she wanted newer books because I thought of a bunch of great books that were like 10 years old. And she's like, it has to be newer. Like the publishers want newer comp books. So yeah. keep that in mind too. Um, what about just to kind of help, like help broaden this question a little bit. Um, uh, for you, Jen, what if um, an author in their query writes something like elements of, you know, X, Y, and Z elements of 13 reasons why, like, is it helpful to be more specific? So it's not because like, that's a, the, the book has so many elements <laughs> in it. It's like, well, what about 13 reasons why? Um, right. I mean, you could definitely, oh, sorry, you can definitely say like, it has the tone of yeah. or the, you know, it, it uses, you know, cassette tapes like, you know, those kinds of things. So if you can be very specific on why it is like that, I think it can be beneficial. Okay, yeah. That's because because it can be really broad, you know, like obviously um, it kind of goes without saying, you know, don't be like, well, it's like Harry Potter. Well, that's great, but you know, you run into trouble with that. But if it's, you know, a more specific book um, that has, you know, qualities in it that you know readers really love and like that you incorporated into your story I and mean, hopefully that'll come across in the query any, anyway but it maybe it's helpful to kind of prompt prompt that more specifically rather than just doing a broad like it's the next hunger games <laughs> right yeah for sure i would say i do see 13 reasons why i comped a lot in queries i see harry potter comped a lot i see a lot of Greek mythology 
actually in in queries. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. I don't see Hunger Games very as much, but I do see it. Divergent. Those are always yeah. big ones that people use. So, yeah. All right. Just be mindful. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Yes. Are there any? She says yes. Specifically, almost seems more clear than taking a whole book. Wait, than taking, taking a whole book to comp. Mm -hmm. Like pointing out specifics of it. I really like that. I might do that with my next books. Yeah. I'm going to need both of y'all to help me find comps for my current whip. Your, sure. Your current whip? Get back over here. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the outline and you liked it. I do. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I guess we could wrap up. I guess so. Thank you everybody for joining us. And thank you, Anne, for being here. I'm so, I'm so happy we get to Say hi to each other. Yay! And I love your costume! Thank you! Anne of Green Gables! Yay! Anne forever! Okay, well, make sure y'all check us out on Facebook and you YouTube under the Writers Uncut handle, I guess. Search for it. You'll find us. You'll find us. And you yes. can follow us all and, on Twitter. Yes. And, um, Anne, do you want to say your, your Twitter handle one more time? Sure. My Twitter handle is at my name, Ann, A-N-N-M, Rose. That's where you can find me on Twitter. On Instagram, I'm totally antastic. I also have a Snapchat, if you guys like Snapchat. And, uh, but I won't bother. It's also totally antastic, but not spelled out. It's confusing, so. <laughs> well, thank you guys. And you can catch this live for 24 hours here on my page. And then, of course, like Shan said, on our YouTube. We'll post it there and we'll be back next Wednesday. So uh, make sure you leave us your questions about writing, publishing, promotion, all that jazz. We probably won't be in costume, but we hope to see you then. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye guys. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.